Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is George, if it's your first time here and if you're returning, thank you for watching again. Today, we're gonna be installing a steering lock kit for an extra lock to do more mad drifting on the IS200. Let's have a look. What we've got is a lock kit from a company called Form to Drift. They generally do a BMW, all the BMW stuff, E30s, E36s, 46s. I managed to blag myself a free stuff thanks to you guys watching, so thank you very much. So let's have a look at what's inside the box. You're gonna receive a box like this. Inside you'll have some instructions and some fittings. You have truck ribbons. I believe these are GS300. They're a bit longer. These are made by Treble 5, so it's good quality stuff made in Japan. And then you get the lock kit itself. Uh, they're marked right and left and they will move your ball joint forward uh, and out so it gives you more camber and caster. So let's do it. Couple of things before we start. This is not paid promotion. I just got stuff given for free. I'm gonna give you an honest review. If I think it's rubbish, I'll definitely tell you not to buy it and obviously the other way around. Another thing, if you like the channel, if you wanna support it, drifting, anything that the company makes goes directly back to the channel. It's my clothing brand. If you've got a small kid, buy him a high-vis beanie so you'll never lose him again. So let's do it. Before we start, let's have a look at the stock angle of the leading wheel. So it's almost as if this inside just clears the bumper so we'll try and remember it and I'll also try and mark it on the floor. And there it is marked up. So first up, we're gonna try and loosen up this, this nut here. <coughs> Not too, too bad. That's it. Sorry about the airplanes, they're flying a bit more and more now. And then we're gonna take the split pin out and undo uh, the tracker then so we can spin it out. Couldn't choose smaller pliers if I tried. Okay, so that's one part done. Now let's tackle the actual ball joint. Okay, so see how this goes down. Let's undo the circle clip again. Now we're going to whack it a few times trying to break the taper. We are going to be reusing this ball joint so we can't be splitting the rubber and stuff. So uh... Oh yeah, no, it is loose. It is loose, it's just because of the coilover it acts a little bit different. Alright, so let's take this off now. Next up, we need to try and modify this ball joint slash kingpin, whatever you want to call it. And that is by cutting this excess because we will not be needing that anymore. Let's do it. And we're going to use, install this to the uh, hub assembly. Okay, then we're gonna install the ball joint. No, nope, looks like we need to go from the bottom. Obviously, I'm gonna check everything by hand. Okay, we'll do that when the uh, track rod ends attached. Okay, now this is the track rod end for the left of the GS. Because I believe if we put the right one on there, the bend is going to hit on here. But let's see why not. Let's see. It might be different. Okay. Now guys, don't forget, obviously this is not designed to be used on the road. So when you install in similar thing, just bear that in mind. And this is for off-road use only for a closed drift events, as it says. All right, gonna try and set the track in by eye. Just makes it a little bit easier when it's on the floor. 
All right, I've unlocked the nap just yet because we're going to be uh, trying to do the tracking on the floor. Now, the only thing I can say about this kit that I have noticed so far is, if I show you, it's not a biggie, but it's not, don't particularly like it. So if you look at this castle nut, let me try and focus it for you. You can see the hole for the split pin and above the castle nut. So there's no real benefit of having the castle nut. So uh, maybe a one with a nylon look would do the trick, but we're just going to put the split pin above. It's going to do the trick, but it's just not, not ideal. Oh, this looks like fun. Thing what I'm gonna do for, for future, I'm gonna get a uh, nut that's just a nylon lock instead of this. Yeah, I just think it's just gonna work better. If you are enjoying the video so far, please do me a favor, hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. You know, all those things people are asking for. I'm gonna crack on with the other side and then I'll see you guys when I'm ready to put it on the floor and see what sort of angle we've made. Okay, so I finished the other side and I've lowered the car. I haven't started it, I haven't moved it. One thing I've got to say, it sits quite nice with the camber. Now I'm gonna start it up and turn the steering. Let's have a look. We still have that mark on the floor with the angle before and let's start it up. Okay. So I think that's quite a difference for the amount of money you spend on this kit. Let's mark it up. I'm just going to insert the clip from the beginning of the video as well just to give you an idea. And now this is the marks on the floor. Awesome. Now I think this kit is a really good value for money. Now I think it was about 150 quid it is. It will give you more steering lock than you'll ever need on your Lexus. It will also fit JZX 110 and the JZS 171 Toyota Crown and maybe even the JZX 100 and the 90. I'm not entirely sure on that. Now I'm not really sure about this car. If you watched the previous video, I was struggling a little bit with the way it drifts. So I'm looking for another car. I know I only just got this and maybe there's not even a point in recording this video. But as I said, I got this kit for free and I promise that I'm gonna make a video and make an honest review, which I've now done. So this kit, I think is definitely worth the money apart from that one little bit where the tracker then goes. But that's it for now guys, and I will see you guys next time, maybe with another drift car. Bye.